Today, I'm going to show you how to set up alerts for Ancestry and your family search accounts, as well as Google Alerts, so that you can keep track of the ancestors you're researching when somebody else is working on them too. We're going to do that here in just a moment. Welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. If this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist, here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family research. Especially if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. You don't want to miss a thing. They are definitely designed for you, uh, and they are all free. Uh, don't forget that Genealogy TV also has a newsletter and a Facebook page and a website at genealogytv.org. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's jump over to the computer and learn how to set up these alerts. Okay, first we're going to start with Google Alerts, and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to uh, Google and type Google Alerts. Now, keep in mind that you're going to need a Google account in order to make this work, and... <clears throat> Quite frankly, it's super easy uh, to set up a Google account. If you don't have one, there are so many reasons why you should. It isn't funny. I talk about it all the time. There's a lot of free resources on Google. I know some are shy about doing that, but um, and quite frankly, y you're going to get a free email account, all of that, if you're not familiar with uh, Google accounts. So to set up a Google account, it's really uh, Google Alerts is really quite easy. So right here, uh, just by typing in <laughs> Google Alerts into the Google search box, um, and I'm on Chrome, by the way, uh, you can uh, get information on how to do that in case you forget how to do that. Uh, how can I create a Google Alert? It gives you instructions right here how to do that, but we're going to do that right now. So we're going to go up top and we're going to say google.com forward slash alerts. Now I'm already in my... Google account. I have a couple different uh, accounts, so I'm going to use the Genealogy TV one, and I'm going to create an alert. Now, as you can see here, I've got uh, Rebecca Henley, and I've got her in quotes, Rebecca Henley or Rebecca M. Henley. Let's edit that so we can see exactly what that looks like. So I have asked for, in quotes, Rebecca Henley. That's going to give me exactly the way it's spelled or Rebecca M. Henley, or Rebecca Margaret Henley, and so on. So you can create this alert using the various spellings of a person's name. Now I've got it set to be at most once a day. Um, sources are automatic, which you can sit here and flip through these. They're very easy. I've got it in English, any region, but you could narrow the, the geographic region to the United States, for example. Uh, and how many, uh, only the best results, it says. Um, so I don't need to update that, but normally you would hit save right there. So that's how I created that one. So I could hit quote, and let's say we want to uh, follow a guy named Elijah Guthrie. I'm gonna say and. I want it to be North Carolina or NC. And with that, I can create an alert. So it's got to have Elijah Guthrie and North Carolina or NC. I'm gonna create that alert. And now I've got another one in my uh, alert. Now you can create a range, by the way. See how this one here says 1800 dot dot 1900. That is because I'm asking it for a range of information about Randolph County that is posted regarding the 1800 to 1900. Let's take a closer look at that. There it is. 1800 dot dot giving me a range to 1900. Randolph County, North Carolina genealogy is exactly what I wrote. And so if anybody posts with that um, information for Randolph County, North Carolina between 1800 and 1900, theoretically that should work. All right, so as you can see here, uh, so I've got the range and I've got 
you know, Randolph County, North Carolina, which is a pretty broad subject. But um, I've also got it narrowed down to the United States. You have a lot of, of choices on the region. Um, and I've also asked it for only blogs and books. You have a lot of choices here as well. If you want to add videos or, or other items here, you could. You could just say automatic if you want. Um, so that is a quick way to set up Google Alerts. Now keep in mind the rules that we're talking about here are also the same rules that you would use for doing normal searches on Google. Um, so that might be helpful. All right, so now we're jumping over to Family Search. And well, if you don't have a Family Search, if you are an exclusive Ancestry fan or some other software, you really should uh, consider having a free account over at uh, Family Search because um, you can uh, do additional searching. There are extra records over here that all the other guys don't have, plus you know, it's just another way for you to cast a wider net. So it's really important that you do research at Family Search as well. I'm not advocating for any other reason other than research, but there are some really cool things that you can do uh, to follow some of your ancestors on Family Search that you can't do anywhere else. So let's jump into it. All right, so here we are on the tree at Family Search. Now, once you're logged in, all you have to do is hit the tree here and uh, drill into your ancestors. So here I'm looking at an ancestor, Wilhelmina Lee Koss. We've talked about her in the past. And putting watch notices or alerts, if you will, on Family Search is ridiculously easy. It is so easy, you're going to be blown away. So once you're logged in, um, you know, Family Search has your email address. Now that could be your Google address, it could be whatever email address you want, but the cool part about the watches, the alerts at Family Search are called watches. Um, when you click on an ancestor and you pop up, look this little watch, this little star right here, if you haven't been paying attention to that, you should, because now anytime, you know, anybody does anything with this particular ancestor, I will get notification. Keep in mind that this is a world tree and so everybody has access to modifying it. So if somebody adds a photograph or a record or something to uh, this particular ancestor, I'm going to get an email about it. I think that's pretty cool. I love that and so uh, you know, you can either do it from the tree or you can do it once you click on it one time, you can click on it there. Or let me show you another way to do it. Let's pick another ancestor. Instead of hitting the watch button here, if I happen to be in the full profile of this person, I can also hit the watch button up here. And anytime someone changes something to George Robbins Wade, I'm going to get a notification about it. It is that easy to set up alerts in Family Search. So at Ancestry, it's a little bit different. Uh, here we are at a, a profile for Wilhelmina Lee Cost. Now, you know, you can look at the tree and you can see all the leaves and hints. That's pretty normal alerts, if you will, while you're in Ancestry, okay? But let's go back to her profile for a moment. While you're in the profile, let's say we want to track anybody else that is working on the same ancestor. Uh, that would be at Member Connect. I would highly recommend that you get used to using this. And up here at the top, I have two connections, but there are 24 suggested connections that I should probably be following as well. Looking at these 24, I can connect with all of these people with this little connect button right here. I have uh, connected with a couple people here and having done that is not quite enough with Ancestry in that you need to set your email alerts so that you can get notification if these guys are doing anything additional. So to do that, you go up to your profile and you go to email settings. We're going to pop over there. So once you're in the email settings, you can choose a variety of things. 
as to what you want to get emailed about. Now they do offer promotional offers. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. But if you scroll down a little bit, family tree hints and updates, opening up my own tree, I can receive emails when people, photos, stories, or other content is added to my tree. Now, I believe that's only if you have invited people to work on your tree with you or collaborating with you. That doesn't mean member connect. When you connect with members, it does not mean that they have access to your tree in the way that you can on Family Search, where they could actually go in and edit. Member Connect is just saying, hey, I'm connecting with other members who are researching the same ancestors. Now you could get new hints, uh, receive emails when you're when you get ancestry hints that might help you learn. So if as the algorithms are working on your behalf over there at Ancestry and they're delivering up new hints, or people have added uh, information to their own tree that has the same ancestor that you have. Like let's say for example that Wilhelmina Lee Koss, another person on another tree has the same ancestor and they have uploaded a record that they found or a photograph that they found. They've uploaded it and their tree is public. Ancestry could deliver you a hint saying, hey, you know, they're looking at the birth, marriage, death information, all that statistics and saying, I believe this is the same ancestor on your tree that it is on the other person's tree. And they're going to deliver a hint to you because there's a new document that they have on their tree that you might be able to attach to your tree. So uh, new comments received, emails when others add comments to your tree. For example, um, you remember comments are public. So if uh, someone has sent a note to you uh, in the comment sections or specifically on Wilhelmina Lee Cost, they put a comment in there, um, you get notification of that. Also invitations, in this case, receive an email when someone accepts an invitation to your tree. So that means you've invited somebody to uh, look at your tree and they've accepted that. So you, that's just another way to get alerts on Ancestry. So you could get DNA match insights uh, as well. I'm not going to open this up because I have, uh, for privacy reasons, I have other family members that you can either turn it on or off. Um, and you can get message board notifications. So also message boards are not as wildly popular as they used to be, but there is some good information in there. And occasionally people will add new information on those message boards. So if you are following a specific message board, um, you could get notification of that. It says, I have no new messages on this message boards that I'm following, but um, you could get information there as well. One more uh, comment about Ancestry in that on the home page, you have a lot of alerts right there on the home page when you log in. Now, that's not an email alert to you. We've already discussed what your email options are. But remember that, you know, your member connect, uh, for some of you, you may not have it in the same order, these little widgets on the front page as I do. Um, in my case, I have an older version, so I have the ability to customize my home page. From what I understand, the newer members do not have the ability to customize their home page. Um, but you can follow Member Connect right here on, at least I can, on my home page. And you can turn off and on uh, the activity uh, in the trees that you want to, to watch from Member Connect. Personally, if you're working on a line, leave it all on as far as I'm concerned. Also, right from the home page, one other alert system that Ancestry has. If you scroll down, you've got whatever tree you have uh, currently enabled. There are other hints popping up. And in this case, I was uh, looking at this one. And while I'm sitting here looking at this record that, you know, alerted me from the home page, here is another way to connect to Member Connect. Other people that are working on the same person uh, you could click through that and connect with them as well. When I do that, here is all public trees for this particular guy that I'm working on, Joel Davis out of Randolph County, North Carolina. And I can see other people that are working in the same area. So it's just another way to connect with everybody. There
there you have three types of alerts that you can set up to follow your ancestor and what other researchers are doing with regard to the ancestors that you are also researching at Ancestry Family Search and on Google for that matter. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Uh, make sure that you are hooked up with the newsletter and the website at genealogytv.org. Links for everything are in the show notes below. Oh, and don't forget you can find us at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash genealogy tv. All right, it's time for you to go find your ancestors and set up some alerts so that you are aware of what others are doing while you're researching. Okay, it's time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.